All right, back in 2002, the murder of journalist Daniel Pearl shocked the world. Daniel was working for the Wall Street Journal as its South Asia bureau chief, and at the time he was in Pakistan investigating the case of shoe bomber Richard Reid, as well as alleged links between Al-Qaeda and Pakistan's intelligence service. Now, Daniel was on his way to an interview when he was kidnapped by militants, and later he was killed and beheaded. All of it videotaped by his captors. Left behind after all this was his pregnant wife Marianne, also a journalist. The couple actually met at a party in Paris and got married in 1999, then they moved to India. The day after 9-11, the Pearls traveled to Pakistan along with a slew of media, and they reported there until early 2002. A day before they were to leave on vacation, that's when Daniel was kidnapped. Now, in the aftermath of his murder, Marianne wrote a book about her experience called A Mighty Heart which you may recall was turned into a film and Marianne was played by Angelina Jolie. For weeks he thinks he's meeting with Jelani and there is no Jelani. Right. And whoever these people are, they're thinking about doing this for weeks. It is disappointing. Marianne now lives in Paris with her son Adam. Most recently she's written a series of columns for Glamour magazine featuring brave women around the world. Marianne says she wanted to show her son that there's hope out there. She's also published a collection of those columns in a book called In Search of Hope, The Global Diaries of Marianne Pearl. Ladies and gentlemen, Marianne Pearl. Welcome to the show. How are you? Good. The, tell people about the book. Tell them about, uh, it's a, uh, who it's about and what it's about. Uh, it's actually a series that I did in, um, uh, in Glamour magazine. Uh, about 18 women around the world, so 18 different countries. Uh, so we've been traveling a lot. No <laughs> yes, no kidding. Uh, this includes Canada, by the way. Um, and um, and it's, uh, the, the purpose of the book was to say, you know, there's a, a lot of reasons to be, um, to, to, be to, have, to despair about the world, particularly if you watch the news. I think a lot of us are, you know, shutting off. And so the question was, you know, so is there so many reasons to despair? Are there some reasons to, to hope? You know, are there hopeful things in the world that we can all uh, hang on to? And I think that, you know, uh, that, that is to be found in the personal stories of individuals. I chose women because I have to say, you know, it's just, uh, just the way it is in the world, particularly in, like, you know, mostly in Africa and in Asia, uh, women have, you know, are the main agent of change. And uh, this is incredible, like, uh, you know, I encourage people, the, all the proceedings of this book go to these women, so mm -hmm. I'm not doing any publicity here, but I think they're very, very powerful, very uh, genuine uh, stories, you know, difficult, but very genuine and, uh, and hopeful in a, in a deep way. I think it's not, an, it's not you know, very shallow, but, yeah. but it's deep. Well, yeah. it's interesting though, because, I mean, you're right, we say, but women being agent of change in many of these cultures, but in, in similar cultures, they're also often second-class citizens. And mm -hmm. so they, they have to, it's a much bigger step to, to, to do what they're able to do. Well, I think it's just, you know, general in life. I think, you know, for all of us, like, you know, if you see, like, when we improve in life, it usually comes from hardship, yeah. let's be honest, right? And so uh, I think, you know, these women have, you know, are coming from very, very difficult position, and mostly, like, in Africa, for instance, you know, really, like, it's very obvious in Africa. You see all the wars, like, in Liberia and other, you know, Liberia has the, she's in the book, the first mm -hmm. ever women to be elected president in Africa. And, um, and you see that all the, 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 all the issues have been, you know, really man-made, you know, they've destroyed the whole thing, you know, they, and women are taking over. And uh, like now they've elected this woman because they, she's, you know, fighting for education. And yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, it's, it's, they're just taking over because men have just, excuse me, the language messed up. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, no. <laughs> And I'm being, you know. <laughs> Not yeah, too I'm many behaving. people will argue with you <laughs> on that. The, uh, uh, much change comes through hardship. I suspect mm. you can relate to that, but I wonder if much change has come. Like, how do you, what you went through was so public, but yet so personal. Yeah, I don't think, like, for me, it's the opposite way. I think, uh, for me, the, uh, the main challenge was to not change, you know? I think uh, uh, something like that happens to you, you expect it to, uh, to change. So, you, you know, for instance, uh, maybe be fearful, become fearful, but, you know, lose your sense of empathy. Uh, anything that terrorism, you know, is supposed to achieve by acts of terrorism. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, like, you know, I, I, you know, I knew that the, the, the one, you know, big victory I could claim over those people was to not change. And I don't think I have. If you ask my, my you know, my friends, you know, <laughs> I'm the same person. I suspect you had to have a conversation with yourself to... When, when the grief was around and also the, the, just the anger, 
you had to make a conscious decision to be that way, and, yeah. and with also with your child? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, what I'm telling you is a result of a long process, obviously, you yeah. know, it's, uh, so I, 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 I had to agree to lead the fight, you know, I also knew that I did not want to lose that fight, mm -hmm. and so I knew that, you know, going to, like, you know, the normal path of revenge, or, you know, answering to a hatred with hatred, we've done that so many, you know, for so many years, uh, that I knew that, you know, the difficult, but the only path, and the only, you know, and the most difficult one was to start with myself, mm -hmm. even even though I was, you know, I could have been legitimately angry, and I was legitimately angry, but... And, you know, I mean, a lot of people who are watching who may not necessarily, they obviously won't go through what you've gone through specifically, mm -hmm. but in their own way, have to deal with, you know, the loss of a partner, and they have a child in the mix, and there's that conversation, how, you, how do you talk to your kid, how do you bring your kid up understanding what you've gone through? What kind of conversations do you have? With my child? Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I uh, tell you, like, one uh, anecdote, one day we... Um, you know, uh, Adam asked me, uh, "Do you uh, are you going to teach me everything you know?" And he was like, a f "You know, he's, five, he's six now, so he was like five five years old." And I said, uh, "You know, of course." And I, I've always told, told him the truth. You know, he knows his father has been assassinated. You know, I haven't you know gone through details, but he knows. And when I ask me a question, I answer. I, mm -hmm. I don't think you should lie to, to to you know to people in general, but to children either. So he asked me, no, I said, yes, of course, that's what I'm here for. And he said, well, it's a good thing because I'm going to teach you everything you don't know, <laughs> you know. And that's, what that's, you know, that's, that's what kind of people he creates, you know. I think, sure. like, if you, if you uh, you know, again, you know, if I hadn't done that work on myself, I don't think I could have done, you know, achieved that with my son. But, you know, having confronted fear, he's not a fearful child. What could he teach you? What don't you know? Oh, yeah, well, you know, like, you know, my, my culture about superheroes, very limited, you know, Spider-Man. This is very important stuff Avengers. to know. Oh, Sometimes in sorry. this world, we wish we, we wish we had superheroes in this yeah. world. What's so interesting about this is the stories, right? It's, it's storytelling, which is how I think a lot of information gets passed down. And I know that journalism is a place people go to. You're a journalist, and I wonder how you thought journalism has changed, you know, over, certainly over the last few years in the post 9-11 yeah. world especially. Right, right. No, it's very, uh, I think it's very serious what's happening in the world of journalism because, you know, for many reasons, why one of them is uh, it's become much more dangerous to do, uh, you know, our job and, and um, you know, there was an unspoken understanding, I think, after, before Danny died, you know, he's the first journalist to have been killed intentionally as a journalist to keep journalists out of the country. Uh, but it was an unspoken, unspoken understanding that we were neutral and we would just cover a conflict and now it's not like that anymore. So it's more dangerous. And also, you know, I think the, the, it's by, you know, the U.S. Uh, publications have cut their foreign bureaus by 50 percent, foreign staff. And that's, you know, that's really bad. That means, you know, we don't know what's going on in the world. And, you know, the people that are there, all they do is cover the news, you know, the news, whatever. Yeah. So you put a bomb, you create the news, that's the news, you know. And, and, but you don't, you don't have a way to relate and, con and, and connect to the reality of people. That's hard to get the, and the context of it is what's And the missing. context of it and, you know, and the incarnation of it and, and the intimacy with it. So if we lose that, that's very, very dangerous because, you know, if we don't have that, then, then we're ignorant. And if we're ignorant, then, you know, you know, war obviously breeds on ignorance. So it's a very serious thing. I think that, you know, what it means for journalists, I mean, it means something for the world, but also for journalists, I think, you know, that we haven't, like, really um, acknowledged the situation and said, well, you know, what does it mean about what we're doing? Are we doing something wrong? Should we change what we're doing, you know? Um, but I hope that the next generation of journalists will have any way to, to, to think harder on why they want to do that job and what responsibility it brings. You know, I think it's a good thing to separate celebrity mm -hmm. and journalism. You know, it's two different things. You got caught in both worlds when they made a movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, story. but that didn't, that didn't make me, uh, you know, um, I'm not a cel I mean, I don't, you know, I don't see myself. I'm a journalist, and, mm -hmm. and I've stayed, I told you, I haven't changed. Yeah. <laughs> don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just met you. I'll have to make my decision afterwards. Yeah, um, exactly. The, the uh, you know, for some people, when they watch a, a movie and, and their life, part of their life is in included in the movie, you know, it's different than watching, uh, you know, a feel-good story where a football player watches a story live. I wondered for you, did, when you sat in the theater, when you watched the movie, and it wasn't that long ago what you were going through, um, the story of you and, and your husband, and you get to watch it played out in front of you. What was that, what did you feel? You know, I, um, this movie, uh, we made that decision to make that film, because I didn't want to do it, I didn't think, you know, uh, to, to make that film when the United States went to war in Iraq. 
And, you know, that's, the, that's kind of the main reason that, that made me, you know, do this movie, because I felt, you know, people don't understand what's going on. It's just, you know, it's going to be a worst, and it's obvious, and everybody can, could know that, and I just couldn't... I was so angry that, you know, uh, that we're just getting the situation worse, and obviously we did. Uh, so, the, you know, I just thought, well, people don't read, let them watch a movie, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it was just my attempt to, you know, feel, to, like, you know, bring a message out there that could, you know, tell about this war in a human level. And that's it, you know, and we all did what we could, the best we could, and that's, you know, but it's, uh, it's an act of, um, uh, it's an act of, you know, of a city, you know, of citizen. It's, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's why I did this movie. The rest, you know, I, we, um, that's, that's about it. So for me, I wasn't, you know, trying to find any kind of personal rewarding. He wasn't going no, but to... But how uh, do you feel watching it? Because it was like, I watched it, mm -hmm. uh, and I, you had these moments of deep emotion, and mm -hmm. it's not, you know, as a human, I connect. Mm -hmm. But for you, as the human in the story, when you, were you able to watch it back? Did you were you able to sit in the theater and, 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 and be able to be comfortable watching? I I watched it at home. I didn't sit in a theater with other people. You know, I just did what I needed to do, and uh, it was obviously very you know difficult. But also, it was a you know it was a great what helped a lot. It was a great hu human adventure. Uh, you know, very much and. Uh, and I, uh, you know, I'm grateful that uh, I was surrounded by the right people. I, I, I could see that if I wasn't surrounded by the right people, it could have been a nightmare, yeah. you know. And uh, so I'm, I'm very lucky, and I was very protected that way. And the rest, you know, is for you guys. I mean, and I think everybody did their best. And then if people want to listen to hear what this movie has to say and what it's about, then they do. If not, <laughs> whenever, whenever I get asked who's going to play me in the movie of my life, I always say Brad Pitt. But I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> Angelina Jolie. <laughs> They played you. I mean, what kind of? How do you tell somebody about who you are so that they get you right in a film? Uh, I think, well, first of all, like you know, the the intentions, as I said, you know, of the film were were very uh, uh, common. You know, so it wasn't about her or me. You know, and I was lucky that I was uh, with some that it was somebody who wasn't trying to impress anybody or you know get more famous or get more rich or mm -hmm. she was doing it for the right reason. So already, you know, if you do a project like that for another reason than yourselves, you know, you're already in the right path. I mean, the rest is just secondary kind of, right? Mm -hmm. And in terms of um, of um, of her playing me, I, I asked her that because I thought, you know, we we were friends already, we knew each other, and uh, and I trusted her. You know, so uh, that obviously is a big element. You know, the fact that she looked like me doesn't look like me. It wasn't as much of my, <laughs> it wasn't my, my preoccupation. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and but probably I would not have uh, agreed to it if she had said no. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. The book is called In Search of Hope: The Global Diaries of Marianne Pearl. Thank you very much for coming right. to the program. Thank you. 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 Thank you.